I'm fishing on the beach. I've got my bait out. I've already caught one bass. Pleased with that? And then I see some birds coming along. Always watching which way the birds are going. They're going that way. I ask myself, why? I'm out of breath, people. Take a gamble. I've got the rods on uh, slack drag. I just seen one bust in here. There they are. Oh, let's run. See if we can get one. Now nah, the shoal's gone way out. Oh, it's a few there. Yeah, there's still some in here. They're only schooly, so. I almost just got lucky with that one. They're still there, look. So you can also get preoccupied. I'm on. Oh no, I missed him. On again, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feels like a mackerel this time. Wow, this is what it's about. Look, evening sun's gone. It might be it. No, that's a, that's a mackerel. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh, a nice mackerel. Nice mackerel. Here he goes. Back. Well, that's turned around a bit. But don't worry, it switches off as fast as it starts. Mm -hmm. I was winding near the... Oh, I'm on again. Oh, I was winding near the surface because I watched them chasing the bait up. Ooh. Oh my God, this one's going. Is that a mackerel or a bass? Oh no! Oh, this one, this one might be Barbie land if it's any size. Here he comes. Oh, they're busting in front of me, look, right there. Oh, a nice mackerel, look at these. So tempted to keep them a bait. It must be the lucky hat. And again, oh, and again, oh my God. What a good job with all the spinning rod. I'm gonna say this one is a bass. It just is not put in the same, maybe I'm wrong. No, it's a it is a mackerel. No, I was called it right. I called it right, people. There you go. Another bass. Smith, keep count. I've lost count. I cannot get out fast enough. I've got something wrong with the line of the reel. I've got no choice but to fish with what I've got. Don't know what's happening. They're right here in front of me. Right there. Now that might be it. No, I'm on. Look at that setting, people. Look at that setting. Oh, I 
if only this reel was this reel was filled up with line and it's like a mackerel look at this one <laughs> proverbially one after the other That's a good little lure. Look at the birds going further down. I'm on, oh cow, look at the white water there. Right in the margins. So pleased I came in the evening. That could be a bass. Another bass, called it right. Get him back. There's a guy watching them for me down there. Maybe don't run off of them. He knows I'm filming, so I said, you, you just keep an eye on them, mate. Not sure about the camera, though. It's weird, they're just not in, in front of me. They're in this one bay. Well, I've got to say, people, that was a bit of fun. No question of that, I really enjoyed it. Now, that's a rod and reel I used. It's just a regular Namura. Get the binoculars on, tell you guys what it is. IZU, IZU SW, means nothing to me obviously. Rod class, 12 to 20, 2.10 meters, 7 feet. To me, it is a nice two piece, 7 foot rod. Quite pokey, it's got a lot of power to it, it's quite nice. The reel is a 2000, one of those makes that. Uh, a very popular, it's a 2000 size little reel, and I've got I think 15 pound line on there now. I think I had 12 of I've had on there before, but obviously, it doesn't matter what you use, it's the little gizmo at the end that catches you the fish. And there's a, there's a lure called a Dexter Wedge, and that sort of looks like it, doesn't it? I don't know if that's just a stick on, probably, it's a, yeah, it's a stick on. That prism at the front is a stick on, but it's a wedge shape, it's like a casting wedge. Small treble on it. If anything, I think I'd put a single hook on there because it's got a split ring. I think it'd be a bit better, to be honest, because sometimes it jams and it's difficult to get it out of the fish if you're returning them. Listen, if you're killing them, harvesting everything in the sea, fine. The bass are undersized. I throw them straight back. What they call shock return. The mul uh, mackerel, oh, they'll all die if you throw them back. Right, might be the people that fill them up and put them in a bucket. I don't know. I was throwing them back. They got a chance, didn't they? I kept one for cooking. So that's a wedge, that's a lure. Really pleased with that little catch. And don't forget, when you pack up with a rod and reel, don't just put it away in the garage or the shed. You've got to do this. We had a really enjoyable session beach fishing last night as I make this, but the tendency is in the hot weather just to come back, put your gear away and not bother washing it off in fresh water. That's very bad news. So what you want to do is make sure you screw the drags down on the reels to push the drag washer plates together. Okay, so that crushes them, that stops the water getting in there too much. Even with this little one, I do the drag up. I leave the rods always I had them. My rods are in a, a shocking varnish chip state, but it's the way it is. The fish don't appreciate varnish. Get your hose dry, wash them all off, give the rings a good spray as well. Anything wasted goes on the flowers. That little spinning wheel was really good last night. I've got to fill the wheel up uh, with some line and then just run the hose over it rather than blasting it. Obviously you're not going to get right in there. Turn it over. If you blast it in like this, Okay, your blast salt into the reel. It's better just to wash it all off loosely like that. Don't matter so much with the rod. Trust me, I've been doing this enough years. I never, a bit like when I had the boat, I don't ever neglect washing it off. Ever. The salt water will pay you a visit one day and you'll wish it hadn't. Okay, so now when that's, let's turn this off. 
There's not enough water in the river anyway. With the drag stand up tight like that, okay? When it's dry, all, all you do is give them a shake off like this. And the same with multipliers, do the drag up before you wash them to close the drag plates together. And um, when you finish, undo the drags so that it doesn't compress the fibres if it's a fibre washer type drag system. If like me you don't live near the coast, another thing you might want to do, I just pulled all these up look like this, just to pack up. I don't live near the sea, so obviously I don't go that often. But just wash your rigs off like this, and then if you do let them dry, all the hooks go away, they shouldn't be too rusty, and I can sort the rigs out at my leisure. Well, I'm not one of those guys who want to sit there for four days trying to catch a fish. I want to be able to go fishing after work, when I finish my job list, fly fishing, sea fishing, boat fishing, beach fishing, river fishing, carp fishing, whatever. I just want to be able to go. So wash the salt off of the tackle before you put it away. And talking of tackle, how about a little trip down to Grant's Tackle Up and listen to what Grant has to say about ground bait. Now beginners out there, don't miss this because there's loads in there that could help you get those extra fish. Well, come and see Grant, we've got a load of uh, ground baits we're going to run through, but I was intrigued as to why he's got all these, it's blazing hot, and you got them in the sun, Grant. What's that oh, all about? Why so is that? Are you, are you running I casters? Mean, I'm riddling my bait off. So when we have fluoro maggots, red maggots, with the dye, it does kill the bait. Yeah. So what I do to keep the bait clean for you guys when you're purchasing the bait off me is I riddle off every day and take off anything that's older skins. And what happened, what you just saw was I put it outside in the light. If I fill this... It was in the blazing heat, that's what I was surprised. And it was only just, it's only been out there a couple of minutes. So it's been in the shed for 20 minutes, sat in this hopper half full. Yes. And because the maggots underneath are sat in the dark, they don't yeah. move, they sit still. So all the bait on the top sits still and it won't go through the riddle. Ah. Whereas if I take it outside and put it in the bright sunlight, they don't like the light, so it forces them down through the riddle and they go through the riddle twice as quick. So it's not the heat that makes them wriggle more, no, it's they're getting away from the sunlight. Getting away from the sunlight, yeah, so they go down. So you generally find like a maggot in the wild, if you like, would burrow down, find somewhere to sit, and when yeah. the temperature's right, it turns to a caster and it will hatch on a certain day. And these are getting ready for what, the weekend matches? Yeah, these are the weekend for the matches. So these are what we call fluoro pinkies, or known as discos. Yeah. They're just a very bright colour. And we do these in three colours as well. So we do the fluoro, which is either like an orange or a very pink some week, depending on what the dye's been like. Yeah. Or we've also got a red, which I have spilt some fluoros in, which you will see. <laughs> and that's your red pinkies, and we yeah. do a white as well. We can also get yellow as well now, so we do a bit of a mixture. But yeah, fluoro pinky is the main one. And this is basically just a smaller maggot, which we would have discussed in the videos previous. So. Exactly, yeah, just seeing them in the sunlight, because most anglers, you would then say to them, guys, in this hot weather, keep your bait I in the shade. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it seemed like the reverse. I thought, Grant's having a funny, why has he put all his maggots in the sun? No, purely just to get them going for just the minutes. quicker. Just minutes, yeah. because yeah, it's minutes, and I say, it's been out here 20 minutes while I've been mucking around in the shop. So I thought, ah, chuck them outside, yeah. and they've yeah, gone through in minutes, so. Oh, I'll let you deal with those and then we'll have a look at some ground baits. Okay, brilliant, cool. Hi there, Graham. Right, we talked about some ground baits today, which is something a lot of people in a shop ask me about and get confused and don't know what to use, whether they're fishing for carp, roach, bream, tench, perch, various different things. So what we do, we start with my most popular selling ground baits in the shop, which is Dynamite Swim Stem Green Betaine. Oh, these for tench, go in the for tench tents. club gave me some of that stuff. Yeah, so you can see the green colour in the bag on the window there. Is there a reason for the green? I just think it's the smell of the betaine. Yeah. The, the green colour, I'm not too fussed about the colour, but the smell of the ground bait in particular just seems to smell right. Yeah. And is that I, a ground bait additive or no, ground so bait No, it's an actual ground bait on its own. I mean, you will hear betaine in the fishing world and the carp anglers putting it into their baits, which is an additive powder yeah. that is made up in there, which is normally, you'll see like betaine pellets is a koi pellet. So yeah. it's normally like a koi sort of pellet they mix up. So, that would, that would, so, so it's, it's come from that sort of from that pond, background. pond fish background. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, and then they do other So that one I recognise. So that's the green. This is the red, which is the natural colour, they call it. Yeah. You can see the brown colour there on the camera, hopefully. Yeah, it's all yeah. Out, yeah. So 
that's what they call the amino original. So that's just their standard. And that one assumes comes from the amino acids that amino we used to use it. for the lugworm, come out the lugworm for cod, drove the cod mad, except we got no cod. That's it, well, yeah, the unicorn of the sea. And we've also got the black, amino yeah. black, which a lot of guys in the winter months fish the darker baits. And for me, I believe, especially on the canal fishing, fishing the lighter, lighter ground baits, yep. the fish stand out over it. So for me, predators looking at a fish standing out silhouetting over a white background, I tend to think the fish shy off a light ground bait. Especially yes, that's worth knowing, that's worth knowing. Of course, in the winter as well, the waters can go very clear, can't clear they? Clear as well, yeah. So you can colour it up that way as well. Um, you'll get different ways of mixing ground bait. You'll get, a, there's certain ways of mixing it to get more air in it. Um, to give you more out of your ground bait basically, which I will, I'll do a little demonstration for you in a minute. So when you see something like this, it's self explanatory this is Gardons, that is roach. So yes. this is a roach ground bait by Census, and you'll see things that might say Gardons fine or Gardons dark. So dark is just, it's a black ground bait. Fine would be, it's got less particles in it. So you yes. can see the particles, and you'll find a lot of guys who fish for the roach and things like that like the finer ground baits. And for me, I think it's because it creates more of a cloud up in the water. Oh, slower That's sinking slower maybe? Slower sinking, yeah. yeah. So it just creates more of a cloud. Then you get something like that, Census Noir, and it's just a darker ground bait. It's still got similar particles in it to the, the natural, but you just can't see them within in the darker packet mode. But ideal, I mean, I like Census, the pictures explain what you potentially could catch. So you, yeah. you know, carp, tench, bream, roach, hybrids. It's a good all round ground bait. Then we've got one here, which we sell to a lot of guys, the Census Bream Feeder. And what this is a lighter colour ground bait, it's non fish meal based. Um, that tends to be what the guys use for the bream fishing. For me, why, being, why non fish meal? I, for me personally, I think what it is one, they don't want to attract the carp. Yes, yeah, okay, so I, I that, think yeah. that's the main thing. But I for one know, as you will, when you've been carp fishing and you add fish meal, pellets, things like that, you seem to get absolutely slaughtered by the bream. But I think it's more of a tactic to avoid having carp in your swim. Yeah, and it does say on there, yeah. match match range. So you're yeah. generally looking at slightly smaller, smaller fish. Smaller fish, yeah. and they don't want to be hooking the carp because they want numbers of fish yeah. quickly to the net without playing a fish for 20 minutes, which is what we enjoy when we're uh, pleasure fishing, obviously. This one is called Explosive Feeder. It's an active ground bait, so when you mix it with water and it goes in the water, if you were to throw a ball in the edge, perhaps I can do some in a bucket in a minute and we'll show you one. Yep. When you squeeze it and prop it in, it's active and it starts popping and blipping yes, and it rises some. up and down. So it's basically got like bits of particles of pellet and other items that float in there. Oils and stuff in There's there. There's oils in there, but it's not loads of oil in these ground baits, it's more natural product. So it will be things like seeds and pulses that are dry, yep. but obviously as it's wet on the bottom and it breaks up, it's still got a dry content, so it wants to float. So it's going yes, up and up down and water. creating like different particles in different layers. So uh, that's just feeder, you wouldn't generally throw it in as a ground bait, would no, you? No, I mean you could use it as ground bait, they generally use it as a feeder because what would happen is if you're chucking it in at a closer distance, then particles that are going to fizz and float would probably potentially just pop straight to the top straight away, whereas yeah, it's in a yeah. feeder to the bottom, it hits the bottom of the water and then breaks up. You're starts. almost feeding it from the bottom, bottom of the lake bed up to attract gotcha, fish gotcha. to come Because me being a heavy hander with ground bait, using it by, you know, the wheelbarrow full, would be tempted to whack probably most of that most in and have a little it. bit left for the yeah. feeder. Yeah. And most of it will float up in the water. Yeah. So or one of the other options we used to do on the river fishing was if the bream were up in the water and we're fishing the feeder would come down. We'd have older casters that would float put them into our ground bait so they would come up off the bottom float and hopefully the idea being is to attract the fish to come down to the I got you, work both ends of the water. Yeah, yeah. so you guys. Uh, these are just some other slightly cheaper versions from Census. Um, you can see the bigger particles, not quite as refined. Yep. Um, but yeah, just got them out for different colours really to show you they do lots of different colours. I mean, if you if you really get into the ground baits, the European side of it, they all ground bait fish. That's their main stamp yes. of feed. So they go insane. This is just a small selection of what's out there. It's a, a minefield. Is it really? Is that much over the continental match anglers? It's huge. So if I got a census catalogue and we sat and went through it, you'd be amazed. They've probably got over a hundred types of ground bait. In one wow, field. really? Yeah, for various different things. Um, I'll show you one of my old favourites. I grew up as a kid using brown crumb. Yes, you know, I used to have a Saturday by. job at the fishery. It was a bag of brown crumb, a little bag of meat, and I used to go fishing and, and a pint of maggots. And you know, I just like that cheap, cheerful, basic. It just does what it says on the tin, to be honest. But you can use this for bulking out your other ground bait. So 
if you're finding that, say something like that's a bit more money than you want to spend all the time, that's more value for money for what you get for your amount. So yeah. you can mix the two together. You know, there's nothing stopping you mixing grounds and you will find a lot of match anglers will combine different ground baits for their mix. You know, they never tell you, it's all secret. No, it's secret squirrel. That is that is part of being in it. So um, you also can get what they call a two kilo bag. This is what they call a margin mix, bigger particles. Smells lovely, smells of coriander this one. Oh really? It's got lots of flavouring in it and stuff. So yeah, that's really nice bait. There's a new one by Dynamite. So it's fairly, fairly modern, modern, fairly modern, modern one, yeah. So they've only, it's been out probably about 18 months maybe now. So, and then we've also got different types of ground bait method feeders is one that obviously a very popular way of fishing this day and age. So this one is a method feeder ground bait, which means it's just got more of a stickier content to it. I believe if I've sat and read the ingredients, it's probably got a pellet base to it. Yeah. Because the pellet is a good binder and yes, it does stick. Yeah. So uh, this particular brand, you're very lucky in fact, they give you a free feeder inside your bag as well. Sounds good, yeah, if you can find right. it. Yeah, so that's <laughs> a two kilo bag. Um, that's another one, F1s. So you, F1 basically is a carp uh, cross, so it's got no barbules on it. Uh, it's very popular in the match fishing, it's not meant to grow as a big fish. Win they, winters, winter matches they have, they go for the F1s, don't they? Winter matches fish the F1s, or this time in the spring very much so, before the carp really take hold. But they're very finicky, very hard to catch. They fish up in the water, um, fish very light. Well, they are fishing like the pellet waggler for them at the moment. But we do three types of this, we do a natural, a dark and a green. Again, personal preference to be honest, but in the winter months and that, the darker baits seem to go better than the, the natural baits. And of course, a lot of people don't want to get you know, brand names rammed down their throat. No. So you've specifically chosen Chose, a yeah. huge range and I, I of say, everybody because it's not a sponsored no. video, folks. It's just what's in the tackle shop, which you can come in any tackle shop. Hopefully you're coming to the grass tackle up and you can get a selection of everything. Yeah, or you can see if, if other shops do what I yeah. do, when I'm a, <coughs> you've been a wally and opened the box and split the bags with a knife, which everybody's done in a shop at some point, I end up doing what we call a magic mix. So they'll always look different. And what we do is we just get all the bits of ground bait, we add them to a bucket, I mix them all up, and then we just do a couple of, you know, a couple of pints in a bag for a couple of quid. And it just, so potentially you've got a bit of- Everything that's been spilled. in a Everything bag that's been spilled. spilled. So we don't yeah. know exactly what's in it, but it's always very popular. So what I do is I do a little demo of how I'm gonna mix this up, and I'll show you what I would do for me fishing yeah, to make it go a bit further. It's all very well buying this stuff, but, I know by my own experience, not of the good ones, mm -hmm. that the mix is what it's really all about, the it consistency the of consistency. it. consistency. And what it is, you can get guys who fish it sloppy on the pole and tip in and stuff, but I will teach you how we were always shown to mix ground bait when I was growing up to get the best out of it, because you can fluff it up and it goes much further than it would do if you were just to mix it. Hi right, guys, so I'm going to show you how to do mix up some ground bait, uh, and this is my magic mix ground bait we were just going through. So it is a mixture of everything. So what I've got here is a riddle over my bucket. Can I take a little? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. see the smell. It's got it smells of everything. It smells so, of everything. I've got I'm nothing you, you there. Know, nothing. You won't know. So what I do is if I put this through, and you can see the particles that have come out of this as I go through. That's got hemp in it. We can see coming through there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you see all that? So this is all different bits that are crushed up within the baits of various ground baits there. So, but what I do is generally take the bigger particle out and it's so we can get this fluffier. So, but I'll leave a bit in there because it's not the end of the world, but we'll, we'll mix this one together. So remember that you can mix ground baits. You don't have to stick with one. You can make a cocktail and keep it as your own secret as a lot of guys have a mix themselves. So Everybody's got favorites, haven't they? Yeah. They have, yeah. I mean, for me, if I'm using Census Lake or Magic, it's normally got uh, an element of brown crumb in it, so it fluffs up well, but I just love the smell of it. It reminds me of fishing from a kid. Quite fine, all this then. Yeah, so this Very one's all right. Fine. I mean, if I was going to get it finer, I'd use a squat maggot riddle and take even more particle out of it, and that would be if I wanted it to be sinking through the water slower. Yeah. Probably right. float fishing for that, I suppose. Float fishing, fishing, yeah. So what we do now, I'll just give this a mix up. You also, you'll see people on some other various videos where they use a whisk. The yeah. idea of the whisk is to add air to the air to the ground bait. Um, we won't go into that today, that's another little challenge, we can maybe talk into that, but 
if you're starting off with your ground baits, we'd, we'd just go like this. I mean, a top tip is when you're doing your ground bait, I'll put all the bags away, um, keep a little bit in the bottom of the bag. Don't tip your whole bag in. Keep a bit reserved back, and that is purely if you over wet it, you've got something to thicken it back up with. All right, and the trick is, is not to get too excited and put too much in at once. So we can add it, but we can't take it out. So I'm just going to put a various amount in there. I would generally mix up my ground bait with lake water as well, not necessarily out the tap. So that's just something I've always done. Or rainwater. Rainwater, yeah, out of the water that, yeah. so it's just not right. having the chlorine that's base it. to the water basically. Yeah, I've done that. Um, I think if you've mixed your ground bait up over a period of time, it's like a swimming pool or whatever, if you fill up with the chlorine burns off in the end. Oh it does go to this. So we keep We might have an odd guest pop in and wave at me because yeah. they're all uh, covered in the shop. So. I'm queuing up. I'm going to try and get Grant to do this for you quickly. So what I do is I just keep mixing that. You can see it's only just starting to come together. Just to hold. To hold. But what I do is we just keep adding a little bit. Or another, another thing you'll see people have, a little spray bottle. We'll give it a pump and then we can add a little less water, my spray bottle has seen better days over the years. But that is for that job, is it? That is for that job. So this is actually sold by a company called Preston Innovations, but obviously your local garden centre, whatever, they all sell like a yeah. spray bottle. Um, the idea being is, you don't add too much water at once, you can add it a bit at a time. I'd be having that a lot wet already, to make yeah. a big mistake. So, little and often is the key because you just won't get it wrong. And when you fluff, you see it's starting to come together already. And we can add, we're going to smoke a little bit more now. Right, so if you keep a bit reserved back in your bag, you'll always uh, be all right then. And you'd have to work on the principle of your margin fishing. Um, you might not want it to bind together so much. If no. you're going to throw it or catapult it farther, you are going to have to have mix to it up a bit, it, yeah. bind it together a bit. But if you're fishing Mars, as you say, and you want to just slop it together, make it sloppy, and you're feeding out of a pole cup or something, you literally just fill it with slop and pour it yeah. in. It creates a cloud then as well going in. Right, then we're going to show you. So if I squeeze this now, that's come together quite nicely, but that will break up fairly easy when it hits the water. Right, what I'm going to do is when we put, the, put it through the riddle now, it'll add more air to the mix with the water and it'll actually be easier to squeeze together to create the perfect sort of bowl, if you like, to put it out there. So we go with another bucket. So you do different types of riddles with these fishing. So this is one that sits over the top, shallow. A lot of ground bait ones, normally high sided. So oh, they are ground bait ones then. Yeah, it doesn't fall yeah. out. Uh, you'll find that your You'll see different various riddles. You'll have a, th a three, a, I think it's a three mil, a four mil, and a six mil. Three mils your, your squat riddle, four mils your pinky riddle, and then you do the six mils normally your maggot riddle and use it for ground bait as well. Right, so we uh, add this one to my sieve. Again, this is just purely to add air into the mix and you can take any particles. Does the matchman do this? The matchman will do this. Uh, on the banks or before the match? On the banks or before the match, yeah. You know, if you're very prepared, you get it done before, but a lot of guys, you'll see them do it on the bank and they will take the particles out, the bigger particles of the ground bait. So you see now, that's much... Fluffier. Fluffier, almost. yeah. It's getting fluffier in the bucket. And then when I squeeze it, just goes together lovely. So if I was float fishing, margin fishing, you know, a couple of rod lengths out, and we're feeding little and often methods, and you're pinging bits of maggot, I would generally, a nice little balls to start with maybe. So you just, you say, you can, the harder you squeeze it, the more compact as it is, and it will stay together for longer when it hits the water. As I say, I can really squeeze that hard, make that quite a, so you can get perfectly round if you want, but I'm not too fussy myself. So what I would do generally, if I was, once I've fed in my bulk, and yeah. I'm topping up my feed, and you're fishing for a bite, I'd squeeze what I can in my hand, knock that in half, and that's just my little ball I would then feed. A pellet almost, yeah. yeah. So I would feed me maggot, pinging maggot, little ball of ground bait, 
yeah. get a few bites, then I might top up with another little ball. Don't overload it in the first Don't place. Don't overload it. Again, that same principle, you can add it, but you can't take it out. So that really on the ground, but I mean, what it is, is we're pumping yeah, through yeah. a riddle again, and you'll see it fluff up again. And then if, like, if you wanted to bulk stuff out, you can add your brown crumb or something else to make it. Or bind it, if you're further. distance fishing, you, what yeah, binding you agent bind, would you use? Golden yeah. breadcrumbs or something? You could, so white crumb, yeah. It's more sticky than a brown crumb because of the gluten content in the white crumb. And then what it does is if you added white crumbs to that, you could really make it be super sticky. Like mm. you could make that as a ball and it would catapult, the, way, yeah. catapult it, it would sink to the bottom and then it would break up once the fish actually get into it. So, so this is what it looks like in the water. You can see all the particles fizzing and breaking up now. Oh, see all those bubbles. Yeah, so that's just the, the air is coming out of it. But what the air does is it, it starts breaking the ground bait up as well. So you can see it's holding its shape. I don't know if you can see on the camera there. Yeah, we and then see if the that, fish yeah. was to come in and disturb it, you can see now why they go on about a cloud. And that's still actually still a little ball. Still a there, pellet down there. Which the fish can still move that around, knock it about, and then all of a sudden we've got all these little particles that the fish are feeding on in the ground bait. And now we're mixed up, if you like. Yeah. To a fish that. that's like heaven, he's safe, he's hidden, he can feed. So, Brilliant. Those are ground bait for you. And that's where you hook baits, hook baits that's on top. Hook bait over the top, yeah. Grant, appreciate it very much. Hopefully, it helps you beginners out there. Lovely. Not makes, there's a mistake that I have to make of putting too much water in the ground bait. Does it look a bit like this, Graham? Uh, I'll yeah. take that, put it in the bag for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me. <laughs> and then one. And then you can't <laughs> squeeze I, it together. I, I can't together. throw it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks to Grant, I'm sure beginners there and newcomers to it will be equally as baffled as I am of all the different types of ground bait but listen they all play their part in trying to entice hard biting fish to come to your bait that's what they're there for that they're really I suppose for the match fishing circuit and those guys are really good at what they do and trust me they understand how to mix all the baits together why don't you mix some of that together and make it work for you now Back to the totally awesome base outside. I've got some more information. Out of gas on the barbie, but I've got another big one. I just want to show you. Shock horror on the garden. Do you remember on the last, what we call the midweek, the Wednesday special? I mentioned about what was mullering my roses. Well, let's have a little spin round. The lavatera has just exploded. I soaked it in water. Um, Rainwater, we had some uh, rain butts there as well. Absolutely, it happens all this time of day because they do eventually drop off. So this is the peak of them at the moment, I have to say. They are stunning. I used to try and tie them back and clip them level because you get this stupid human level formula thing. It must be level with the roof. Don't forget that, just let them go wild. The wood in the greenhouse, all the logs for next year should be super dry. There's temperatures about 120 degrees in there. Everything seems to be coming out. I don't know what these bushes are. Are they gooseberry bushes? Is that where we found Michael and Charlotte? Good Lord. These old triffid plants haven't done so well this year. Lost a lot through the winter. And then once I've noticed they, they throw up these huge monstrous stems like this, once they've thrown those up, they go into multitudinous plants, loads of them, and sort of come to nothing. I have thrown some wildflower stuff scattered in here, so I have no idea what they are. Look like cornflower, a couple of the tall ones. And I'm guessing, yes, there's some weeds in there as well. What I call the D, we cleared it all out, got rid of a load of plants that were, were, were died off uh, during the big freeze up. So that's all tidy. The pond is very sad. Lovely, um, beautiful lilies. I lost loads of lilies with that freeze up. And I've had to top it up with water from a well because it's just evaporating as fast as you like. All these are gonna come up as wildflowers, hopefully. And I've got my drain rod system waiting for a thunderstorm to give us some more rain. I mentioned about the rose bushes where some of them are stunners. Others, I've got to snip back, look, the ones that are dying. These ones, look, they're dying. I'm going to snip all those off, probably do that this evening. But the ones that have come through are really, really nice. Does anybody know the makes, models, numbers, serial numbers of which roses these are? 
I can see why people grow roses because they are easy to grow really and some lovely colours standard marigolds we did really well with these this year just got them from a supermarket beginning with tea you'd think they would be no good no they were like doubles and triples and they're at the moment very good but look at the show I've got of the roses now they were mullered about three weeks ago now they're all coming through that's a nice shaped one what is that what type of what name is that is it the totally awesome white special or something like that these all came most of them from Mike's place in Yeovil they were just going to be left to run wild I said no no we'll chop them off bring them up to our place and we'll plant them what weather last night I did really well off the beach look at it blue sky we should be sharking we should be 100% sharking in this I'll just show you this one beautiful white one again it took about two years to come it's a tall one so I don't know where with, should I cut these off? Should I cut this for, this for instance? Should I cut that one off? It looks like a main stem, but if you look higher, there's no bud on it that I can see. The ones we have climbed up the wall, I thought were all yellow, and now we've got. Oh, where did these come from? So I'm letting the rods dry off there. Oh, yeah, I've got one other coloured one. This one was in Mike's house up here, and he didn't want it because with his young ones. He didn't want them spiked on the uh, thorns. It's a lovely, what colour do you call that? Champagne, orange or something like that? Does somebody know what the colour of that one is? Look, this gives you an idea of it. I'm covered in grease because I've just had to take my Kango hammer around to Mike who's doing some physical work, putting posts in, in a heat of the day, which I did uh, think I'll leave to him alone. So there you go, guys, some of the tips going off at uh, our place and the main thing is I dry that tackle out because I want to go fishing again look at it I mean I think we've had three or four weeks of this and I think boy are we going to pay a price now talking about all this hot weather we've been having for about what at this this time four weeks of it just watch this next bit it makes my blood boil so I thought it's time for a Sunday round because I'm walking with the dog Mike's dog, after I've been fishing, take him for an evening walk. Same walk, we know, we know the walk, I live here, I know where the walk is. There's a couple of little pools that they do fishing, and this is what some fishermen have left. I mean, whoever did it, are you, is this a drought? There's a drought, are they brain dead? Check this out. How incredibly stupid is this a barbecue that's fine over here is a bone dry field waiting to be cut there's a drought on a heat wave this was last night all right i don't get it i really don't get it not only have i had the barbecue but has the barbecue spread around the outside here and of course it looks like a few wraps of papers and stuff. I don't know, get people are, are they completely devoid of any brain cells? I don't understand this. It's, it's beyond me. Look how far that spread. These these things should be banned. And there's no there's absolutely no no need for them. But I feel that has burnt out here is not more than a few yards to a tinder dry field. <sighs> Even better, look, if you want some second-hand tackle, just turn up at this place. Look at this, just dumped. This was thrown in the bushes. What's the point? What is the point? What's the point of it? That's probably even a usable chair for me. I don't know. Sometimes you despair, don't you, of, of, of what we're being left with. But the main danger is, I just thought I've got to show this, because I mean, <laughs> this, from there to here. Have they put some, some sticks here to keep it off the ground? Not realising the charcoal doesn't go out without being loads of water over it. That is so close to a major fire. And 
up by what we call Blackbush Airport. Look, when I was a kid, they always had Heath Fires up there. Nothing new up there. But why would you do it? Why would you? Why would you actually push it as far as you can to see if there's a fire? If there's a fire, you will not stop it. Rant over. Sunday morning. Lovely. Good start to it, isn't it? No, wouldn't even entertain it. So there you go, guys. I thought it was worth showing because I was a bit shocked last night when I saw that. And of course, you do have to ask yourself, what exactly was it that they were barbecuing? Exactly. Fish? So, I mean, look at this, just off the road. Super high fry. That's cooking oil that's been dumped into the water course there. Empty cans which will trickle away. I don't get it. I really don't get it. I've never been big on leaving litter around. It's just, there's no need. If you bought stuff in a bag, you've got the plastic bag, put the rubbish in and take it back. Rant over. Anyway, thunderstorm was coming. I figured I've got to do something incredibly stupid. Do I go out and see if I can get struck by lightning? Do I hide in the Saxon house? Yeah, why not? Guys, it's going to be a huge storm coming. I'll show it to you. It's going to be windy. It's just coming through now. The blazing sky. Oh, mama. All the pollen is coming off. I'm going to go down the back here. You might be able to see in the distance there, uh, just at the top of the fields, massive amount of pollen coming off the fields. It's so dark and thundery there. I've seen no lightning. I'm hiding behind the surf shack. I've got my chair. It could be windy in the mic. I'm going to go in the Saxon house over there. I want to see if I can survive a thunderstorm in the Saxon house. I'll take a stab at it and so I haven't seen any lightning yet. I have to do some stupid things though, don't you? I've got to check the spider situation out. Hello? Hello? Just dirty spiders. Wow. <laughs> it's going to be... Oh, that's nasty. It's a piece of grass. Right, let's see if the ancient people years ago knew what they were doing. Am I going to survive a thunderstorm in a miniature Saxon house built by myself and Mike? You can see we've got the, the apex there. It's on Mike's channel, I think. We've done two Saxon houses. One was a big full-size one. And the other was this miniature one for uh, Eve, if she wanted to play in it. This is unbelievable. The clay hardens up like you wouldn't believe. And of course, it does crack. You can see it cracks as it dries out. And the reed that we did, we'll see. It should all run down there if it does run. I don't know how rainy it's going to get. I've got no idea, but the storm was due to be coming that way. I've got this as a backup in case it does leak. I don't think it will myself. Only so much you could do. I guess they had a fire inside or a fire outside. Look, it's all a bit of fun. It's all a bit of fun. Some nasty cobwebs. <laughs> What creature lives in those? Now today, hence the attire, was 29 or 30 degrees. It's just amazing how in here it's probably five, five degrees, eight degrees cooler in here than it is outside. It's ridiculous how cool this is in here. We noticed it before when we were inside, even in the winter, it would have a, a constant temperature, It'd be freezing out there, but it, it wouldn't be freezing in here, it's weird. Generally the wind will pick up from the opposite direction that the storm's coming. Behind me. So the storm will be building big cumulus, or what do they call them? Nimbo, cumulus, strato, ultra, whatever, up in the air. And it, as it goes up, it sucks air the opposite direction, so it's coming this way. And you would think the wind is going that way. There's loads of times in Florida and in the tropics and African countries. The wind will be coming this way and you think, oh, it's blowing the clouds that way. No, no, the clouds are coming towards you. Here it comes. The clouds are coming towards you and the energy produced by 
the clouds going up in the air draws laterally the air across the bottom of the ground. It's here now. Okay, full test. <laughs> it's lashing with big rain blocks. Got nice cool air through the back here. What a good job I mowed the lawn about an hour and a half ago. Give me half a day. There it is. Woo, mama. The one thing I haven't thought of is the big old oak tree behind me. I hope he doesn't come through this and squash poor Uncle Graham. You see my four-year-old from a conker tree right there. I've got some over there three years old but that one is just growing naturally at the same time I planted those. I'll shove one down there. It's growing way better because that one's that's in clay. I'll maybe jump. And that was in the edge of the compost we keep here. Way, way better. And I'm going to leave that uh, to make a really big tree in future. You should be able to see all the raindrops come in. And you put my hand in that nice cobweb there. And the raindrops come off the end, the actual tip there. Drip off the tip of these rush stems. Just like concrete. Obviously not like concrete, but it's rock hard. And this is, I think, three years old. The old willow tree there, which last year, as I speak, 2022, right at the base, I found some really weird looking fungus and asked the guys, it has been dying back. Uh, and they said it's called honey fungus. And once you get honey fungus, basically saw the tree down, it's definitely dead. So that's what I figured is that's all dead wood up there or it's still got must have some sap in it. Generally with the log burner you're gonna leave it, I've gotta say, 18 months, year and a half. Well at the end of the day I either pay Ryan the tree surgeon, probably 180 quid, might be 200 for that one, 180. As if he doesn't get hit by lightning first. To saw it up, and then I still gotta wait for the logs to dry. But my theory is, save myself 180 pounds for the mark, you know, for now. Leave the tree up there. If it's dead, it's drying out in the wind and the weather, and I can saw down or branches fall off it whenever, and then I log it up. I'm just basically letting it happen nat naturally up there. There's a lot of grumbling going on up there. Just actually seen the first. Didn't actually see the lightning. I saw the sky go boom, flash of lightning. There I peep out. I think it's going that way, right over the top. I actually climbed up there because there's one, two, three, four branches, five branches splayed out like the back of your hand. And I've put a double ladder up there, climbed up there's brilliant for making a proper platform, you know, can make a little house up there really, but like a, a hunting platform if you like. Come on, let's see some lightning, but preferably not too close. dodge across under here. Never thought of this, there we go. Even got a seat I made out of pallet wood. This whole thing was made out of pallet wood, except for obviously the roof. There you can see this miniature Saxon house there. This is where we have a fire, a little cook up. Got our log store there. If you haven't seen it, it's on Mike Channel T Outdoors. We're gonna do a hopefully a double overnight here at some stage. I'm gonna stay in this one, Mike's gonna stay in that one. He doesn't know that yet, but he's definitely gonna stay in that one. And we'll have cook up here, maybe I'll do breakfast, he'll do the evening meal or vice versa. Yeah, that's a bit more like it.
Thanks for watching this edition of the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I can't wait to get down and have a go at that shore fishing again. I really enjoyed that. It might have only been half an hour, but it's been there half an hour at the right time. As they do say in the States, be there when they bite. And they're not wrong. See you in the next show.